Uh, I'm Robert E. Chan. Okay. Um, I became a part of Max International on the 23rd of March, 2012. That is about 11 plus years ago. Uh, this evening, I will share the knowledge I've acquired over the past years with all of you. The content of this presentation should not be considered as medical advice, and it does not reflect Max uh, International's official policies. Original source materials have been uh, appropriately cited wherever possible in this presentation. So uh, today is the 20th of September, 2023. And this evening's um, topic will be, um, I will be trying to explain to everyone why commercially produced glutathione do not work. Okay, very listen to this very carefully. Commercially, Produce glutathione do not work. Okay, there are a few reasons for this. Now, glutathione finds widespread usage in various industries, including pharmaceuticals, including food, in the brewing of, uh, of uh, beer, uh, winemaking, and for baking, right? And also in cosmetics. Now, something new has been happening to glutathione recently is that um, it is used in bioremediation, remediation, which means that glutathione actually is going to be playing a role in improving soil and water quality. I don't know. So if you have, if you want to try how true this is, maybe you open up a capsule of what you have, whether it is uh, uh, Max1, Celgevity, or, or uh, for those of you who are in areas where Max GXL is being sold, just open the capsule and pour it into your plants that you have at home. You see if, if it improves, all right? So um, there are four main ways that glutathione can be commercially manufactured. This includes, so it is not like, uh, like our cell, as I'll explain later, how it is produced inside our cell. Commercially produced glutathione have four ways. One is enzymatic uh, catalysts uh, involving using of enzymes to synthesize glutathione in the presence of ATP. Remember this, huh? the, in the presence without ATP in these enzymes, added to these enzymes, even with the three precursor amino acid, like glutamic acid, cysteine, and glycine, it will not be able to, they will not be able to produce commercially glutathione. So using this method, it is also very expensive because ATP is an expensive compound, but it can produce, this is the plus point, it can produce high purity glutathione. This is the first, one of the ways that glutathione can be produced commercially. The second way is for chemical synthesis. It, it involves using chemical reactions to synthesize glutathione from the precursor amino acids. It is a inexpensive method, but it can produce glutathione with impurities. All right. We're always talking about L-glutathione. There is also a flip side of L-glutathione called D-glutathione. And it's because of some of these purities and the thing intertwining. Right? So uh, it can reduce the bioavailability of the produced glutathione. So this glutathione, glutathione that is produced using chemical synthesis must be purified. Okay. This is it, it is just the first step of the production of glutathione. All right. So it is already difficult enough. And we have the third way to produce glutathione is using microbial uh, synthesis. This is something that is relatively new, all right? It's a recent breakthrough. It emerges as a highly promising, cost-effective and efficient approach towards manufacturing glutathione outside of our human body. This innovation 
uh, method actually harnesses genetically modified, right? GMO, uh, genetically modified microorganisms equipped with genes responsible for glutathione synthesis, all right? It's cultivated in a carefully tailored uh, culture medium. And this uh, microorganism naturally yield glutathione as a metabolic byproduct. But this system is still not widely used. Now, the present system that is done on a large scale is fermentation. All right, fermentation method relies on yeast from fermentation using yeast eh? uh, and using sugar as a starting material, okay, with a few enzymes as common choices. Despite yielding low priority glutathione, fermentation remains popular due to cost efficiency. It finds application in food, beverage, cosmetics, and pharmaceuticals. So you can see there are four different ways of manufacturing glutathione. Like for example, yeast, yeast fermentation. There are four different types of yeast. Um, I will not explain them tonight, but uh, you can go and have a look and see what they are. Some of them are not halal. They are not kosher. And some of them are outright, you cannot even take the product. All right. So it depends on how the manufacturer actually produce the glutathione at what step. So of course, the best one is the enzymatic way of synthesizing glutathione, but that is very, very expensive. Okay. So now, glutathione is a tripeptide. It is made up of glutamic acid, a non-essential amino acid. And when it is inside the cell, you have ATP plus magnesium. It combines with cysteine. And the final uh, piece of the puzzle is glycine, where you have ATP and magnesium plus the K plus here. The K plus here is potassium. If you have all of this inside your body, it produces glutathione inside your body, inside your cell. This is more important than having the glutathione produced inside your body. It is inside the cell. So amino acids combine, all right? These are the three amino acids. They combine to form the building blocks of proteins. So we can easily say that glutathione is a protein. All right. So what actually happens is inside the cell, we have all these components, magnesium, potassium, okay, all the enzymes to make it work. So all of them combine and creates the glutathione molecule. The bonds are formed between the amino acid. The reason why I'm explaining this to a detail, don't you, you don't have to remember all of this, but it is just to inf that's just to tell you that for glutathione to be formed inside the cell. Okay, it is the bonding of the amino acids uh, if the conditions are correct. So this, always remember this, this must always happen inside the cell. Now, remember the commercially produced um, glutathione. None of them are produced inside the cell. So the efficacy, all right, or how long it lasts, uh, how good it is, depends on the raw materials that have been used. Take, for example, like cysteine, which is required to manufacture even inside our cells. In the outside world, cysteine can be made from hawk hair. Well, <laughs> sounds, sounds uh, you know, uh, different, but hawk hair, you can have, have your normal human hair. Those are the biggest areas of yields from uh, some of these uh, materials. Now, just to give you the magnitude of what is actually happening with glutathione, the glutathione business is almost 300 million US dollars, of which only a very small portion is used for supplementation. So 
it doesn't because it doesn't really work. So it's used for other things. So now we have this glutathione that is produced inside our cell. Only glutathione produced inside our cells are 100% bioavailable. Okay? And glutathione is resistant to intracellular degradation. That means it doesn't break apart when it is inside our cell. So we have glutathione. We're, we're talking about very small things here, all right? But glutathione is resistant to intracellular. So you don't find um, glutathione disintegrating. So whenever there's a chance for the three amino acids inside the cell, it creates a glutathione molecule, all right? There's no ifs and but about it. It doesn't run all over the place inside your cell uh, organelles. Now, the moment the cell leaves, uh, the, the, the glutathione molecule leaves the cell, the degradation of glutathione occurs exclusively in extracellular space. Now, when glutathione is outside of the cell, okay, it lasts about 1.6 to 14 minutes. This is what we call medically as the half-life of the compound inside our body. Okay, so now you can see um, that the half-life of glutathione in human plaza is 1.6 to 14 minutes. Why is there such a difference? 1.6 minutes to 14 minutes. Therein lies what is produced and the way that glutathione is produced outside of our body. Now, you may ask, why is glutathione ejected from our cells for the glutathione to come out of our cells? The reason for that is our bodies have signals, all right? You may require cysteine in a particular area of your body. So your cells are guardians. So it expels the glutathione out of it itself so that it breaks into the component parts and these are immediately sent to the places where they are required, including the cysteine. So it has a limited period of time because glutathione is metabolized extracellularly by gamma glutamyl transferase. It's an enzyme that is found in the kidney, liver, pancreatic cells. And it's because of this that glutathione doesn't last very long outside of the cell. So for glutathione that is produced in our cell, it probably lasts you as was the previous maybe 14 minutes, right? You see here, 1.6, 14 minutes. So if you're taking an extracellular glutathione that is directly manufactured or is manufactured outside of our cells, what actually happens is that it may last just one minute, less two minutes, okay? So this is the, the reason why glutathione must be produced inside our cell. This is what happens. It breaks down, okay? It breaks down and what actually happens is that cysteine, the semi-essential uh, sulfur containing amino acid, which is critical as everybody, as every one of you have been hearing this for the past, I don't know, 10 years, that cysteine is the rate limiting factor. So, because it is susceptible to auto-oxidation outside the cell, into the disulfide derivative called cysteine, right? This is what happens when you have cysteine that is floating around inside your, your body. It combines and create the cysteine molecule. And whilst there are ways to make cysteine bioavailable, the process is a bit complicated. That is the reason why this bonding of the sulfur group here makes cysteine no longer bioavailable to our cells. This is the reason why extracellular glutathione doesn't work. All right? 
And in order for this cystine to get into the cell, to be broken down, it has to have uh, hydrogen and other enzymes. So it is another process altogether again, right? So if you have excess of cystine in your body, it can result in allergic cystine reaction, including, you know, um, swelling of your skin, the lips, the face, around the eyes. So don't take the risk, all right? Don't go taking, uh, don't go and take cysteine. And for heaven's sake, don't take cysteine, all right? There are pro proponents of cysteine who say that, oh, you know, this, this uh, uh, double bond um, sulfur molecule can be easily broken. It's not easily broken up, okay? It is not as easy as it seems. So this is uh, Dr. Robert Keller, a triple board certified physician, America's top physician from 2003 to 2008, named one of the world's top 2000 outstanding scientists. This is what he has to tell us about taking oral glutathione. If you use a glutathione supplement, it will be destroyed in your stomach before it is absorbed in your body. And even if glutathione could reach the cells, the glutathione molecule is simply too big and heavy to pass through the cell membrane. Look at it this way. You've got a hole this big and a substance this big. It doesn't fit in very well. Okay. So glutathione can be ejected from the cell, but it cannot go back into the cell because there is no channel for it to get in. So extracellular glutathione molecules are too big and heavy to pass through our cell membrane, all right? This is the reason why oral glutathione or commercially produced glutathione, they do not work, okay? They do not work. Even in the process of having this thing work and the, and the molecule broken down, and if there's some, by some chance, the cysteine, gets into the cell to create a few molecules of glutathione, it is still insufficient for the body's requirement. So it is very important to remember this. If you are critically ill, if you are sick, right? Taking oral glutathione is not the route for this to happen, okay? Because we all know that as glutathione levels decrease when we get older, our body's natural defense against infections, oxidative stress, physical aging, cellular damage starts to deteriorate, right? So we become weaker as we get older and glutathione levels decrease as we age by about 10 to 15% every 10 years. So this happens from when we are 20 years old, right? So you say, right, it, it's a bit critical when you say that, oh, when you're 20 years old, you have to start taking a supplement, a glutathione supplement, not necessarily so. However, it is a starting point when your glutathione levels start to take a nose dive because you use more glutathione. And when you reach the age of 40, let's see, this, are, this is the age, eh? When you reach 40, your oxidative stress also increases because of your, the stress that you have, because of the foods that you eat, the hours that you keep, right? So can easily say that you become more and more unhealthy as you get older and older. So critical here, danger when you're around 50 years old, because according to the scientists, they believe that cellular dysfunction, that means your cells start to function, function improperly when your glutathione levels in your body is reduced by 30%. That is approximately when you're 50 years old. All right? And scientists have proven and research have shown that individuals with low glutathione levels have a high association with illness. So if you're, if you're sick, all the time, please go have yourself check and make sure, you know, that you try and supplement with some form of a glutathione precursor. 
Don't go and buy the glutathione just because we said so. Here, the glutathione helps this and helps that. All right? Again, to repeat, glutathione, in order for it to be effective, must be produced inside our cell, not taken externally. So, where do you go looking for this glutathione precursor? And we're here, right? Max International, available in 21 countries, started in 2007. And thereafter, we established ourselves in 21 countries, all right? Including Mexico, which was added this year. We celebrated our 15th anniversary in 2022. So what's this magic that is supporting more than 1 million associates worldwide. This is the man. This is the product. 25 years of research, 37 years in total, 55 peer-reviewed articles spanning over 36 years. Proof of concept was published originally in 1987. All right, Dr. Herbert T. Nagasawa, Chief Scientist, Celgevity Inc., 95 years old on the 31st of uh, May this year, right? He was born in 1927. And the compound that he created or submitted in 1987 is called ribosine. It's a cysteine delivery system, the most advanced glutathione precursor technology available today. Nothing comes close. Nothing that is on the market. I've been doing this for 11 plus years, going to be 12 years soon. I have never come across another product that yields so much for our body. So what is his invention? It's the bioavailable solution, right? When people are asking whether it's bioavailable, it means that it can be absorbed by the body. So we have our cell, we have inside the cell, and extracellular means outside the cell. So the product is ribose and cysteine, collectively known as ribosine. It goes inside our cell when we take it because it doesn't get destroyed because the ribose is protecting the sulfur from the cysteine. So it doesn't form the disulfide uh, derivative called cysteine because the glucose is protecting the cysteine. So when it's taken into our cell, it's broken down. All right? It's broken down inside the cell and the ribose interact with the mitochondria, our energy factories, to produce what is required for the production. Everybody misses this point. That ATP, this, this invention by Herbert, uh, Dr. Herbert T. Nagasawa is, is so simple and it is so effective because the production of the glutathione has the ATP that fuels it, all right? Because of the ATP we have inside the cell, all right? The cysteine goes in, combines with glutamic acid using ATP <coughs> and then with glycine to produce the glutathione molecule that is 828% more than oral glutathione. That means if you take a capsule of oral glutathione, same capsule, you know, a same size capsule of ribosine, your glutathione increased by 828%. This is not a, a joking matter. It actually happens because it makes the glutathione 100% bioavailable. Our body creates the substance or the compounds that we require from our body and it is required by our body and is completely used type by our body. <coughs> so telling you that it's increased by 828%, there was in fact a clinically proven uh, stimulation of glutathione levels in liver cells. 
and it proves. This was done by uh, Dr. Jeanette Roberts, sorry. And it shows that glutathione increases by 828%. And it's actually, in fact, more than 300% more effective than n cysteine <laughs> n cysteine have been uh, tested in double-blind studies, and it is about almost 276% more effective than L-glutathione. L-glutathione means <coughs> oral glutathione. So this is the proof. The paper was done in 1987, and uh, so we have we have the evidence here that the glutathione actually increases by so many, all right? So, so much. So, uh, this is by far, even compared to NSL-16, NAC, it is still by far the best in the world. The best that is and the best that ever will be. <laughs> so, we have a uh, max one. So, focus ribosine supplementation, glutathione precursor, comprising of D-ribose and L-cysteine and the specification for uh, MAX-1. All right, it's made in the US, 60 capsules. It has passed all these certified, certified, uh, uh, certificates, all right, including halal certification, okay? And it's patented, all right? And of course, we have our advanced ribosine technology, glutathione enhancement, which includes ribosine, alpha lipoid acid, broccoli seed extract, turmeric root extract, resveratrol, grape seed extract, oil, anyway, 12 other ingredients that help our body produce glutathione. All right? Not every one of, of the other ingredients create glutathione, but it helps to preserve the glutathione that is created inside our cell. Remember again, I repeat, created inside the cell. All right? It has all the certifications as well. So, uh, be like Dr. Herbert T. Nagasawa. We may be called the glutathione company. You know, when you look at our company's logo, uh, Max International is always Max International, the glutathione company. But there is not even one milligram of glutathione in any of our products because we are the experts in glutathione technology. We know that glutathione, well, it's very easy for us to just add on glutathione into our product and start selling it and saying that, oh, this is your glutathione supplement, but it doesn't work. As responsible people, as responsible uh, manufacturers, as responsible, um, what do you call it, suppliers of trying to increase glutathione, we do not recommend and we do not sell glutathione in any of our products. Okay, that's, that's the simple and final uh, thing about Max products, right? So, the secret of success, what Dr. Herbert T. Nagasawa did, is to do simple things very, very well. It's like putting ribose together with cysteine. The ribose creates the ATP that is a prerequisite of producing glutathione. All right, we just keep telling people, oh, you know, the, the, the glutamic acid mix. Uh, combines with cysteine, combines with glycine, yeah, but in between, there are other things that combines it and the key element for this, even in the production, even in the production of enzymatic synthesis of glutathione, the best form of it, they still require ATP. So this is the secret of the success of Dr. Herbert T. Nagasawa. Let's make it simple, right? Let's make it simple. So with that, I end the presentation. It's very short. I don't want to go through the, the normal uh, process that I go through. So every, every one of you just stay safe and stay well. Uh, live long and prosper. 
and continue to take your products if you are already taking them, right? Thank you very much.